All right, what's going on you guys? It's your boy Jake, your favorite investor. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five shocking facts that you must know if you're a real estate agent that is working with investors. My name is Jake Light. I'm the founder and CEO of Flip Secrets. And over the last 13 years, I've been knee deep in this real estate game. I've done everything that you can probably imagine with residential real estate, primarily flipping houses, but I also wholesale properties. I've done BRRR, where I take a property, flip it, and then convert it into a rental. I've done STRs, which are short-term rentals, like Airbnbs and VRBOs and all that kind of stuff. You name it, I've participated in it, and I've crushed it when it comes to residential real estate, almost to the tone of 1,000 deals. We're at like 987 as of the recording of this video. And in my experience, something that makes it unique is that over 90% of the time I've worked with real estate agents. I don't do the off-market stuff very often. Instead, I'm using on-market properties and I'm leveraging the power of real estate agents to do quite a bit of business and have a lot of success. And so throughout that experience that I have, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to real estate agents. And so I want to put this together because a lot of times real estate agents are coming through our social media pages or emailing in or downloading some of our free tools and letting us know that they're real estate agents that work with investors. A lot of times they have questions and this is going to be very, very helpful. In fact, if you implement some of this stuff, it'll be a needle mover in your pursuit of wealth generation as a real estate agent and as an entrepreneur in today's market. So let's jump right in. Let's go shocking fact number one. If you are not a hybrid, you're likely gonna struggle. We'll say that again. If you are not a hybrid, you're likely gonna struggle, okay? Let me tell you a tale of two agents on the left, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher these names for sake of anonymity. I think that's what you say. I'm not gonna give you their real names, but on the left, we have Tammy, and on the right, we have Timmy. On the left, Tammy, she's an excellent real estate agent. I work with her a lot. I've worked with her a lot for the last few years. On the right with Timmy, I've also worked with him a lot, but the way that they pursue business is completely different, even though they have all the same tools, the same opportunities at their fingertips. With Tammy, uh, she was one of my primary agents in one of my primary markets. She helps me buy properties, sell properties, find buyers. Uh, she's very resourceful. <clears throat> excuse me. She also really helps me if I need to replace one of the resources I'm working with, contractor, lender, you know, anything at all. She's right there. She's very helpful. And at the same time, she's a multimillionaire and she's created that wealth over the last few years since working with me. And at the moment right now, she's actually in a beach in Cabo, Mexico on vacation while still handling my business, while still handling her business and while still making money, okay? Now on the right side, this is Timmy. He's in the same market. Again, I'm butchering the name or I guess you would call that, you know, I'm, uh, I'm giving you a fake name for him because I don't wanna blow anybody up. But with Timmy, I've worked with him very, very often. I started right around the same time that I started with Tammy in that specific market. It's the same market. The problem with Timmy is that he's only a real estate agent. Commission checks are his sole stream of income. And so if there's ever a property that I'm you know, somewhat interested in, but the numbers don't work out, this guy turns into desperation mode. He's foaming at the mouth. Even though I only talk to him on the phone, he's in desperation mode and I can smell his commission breath. That means he is trying to get the commission regardless of how he's serving his client, which would be me in this scenario, okay? Both of them are quote unquote, investor friendly real estate agents, but the one on the left makes millions of dollars and the one on the right, although, I would even argue that the one on the right works harder than the one on the left. The one on the right constantly finds himself uh, with his back against the wall, trying to make ends meet so he could pay his mortgage, pay his car bill, right? I know you real estate agents love that white Mercedes. No offense, real estate agents are absolute gangster, gangsters in my business, but the way the trajectory of their life, their wealth, their finances, and their overall happiness uh, the way that both of their trajectories are, are completely opposite, right? One of them's going up, one of them's going down, one of them's really happy, doesn't have much stress, has a system in place. The other one, it's just like, where can I find the next deal? Because I'm not going to be able to eat if I don't get that check, okay? So most agents, not all, but most agents rely solely on their commissions to build wealth, even when they work closely with real estate investors like me. 
This strategy prevents them from financial freedom, both short-term and long-term. Let me show you what this looks like. Now, the National Association of Real Estate Agents, or NARA, or NAR, or whatever they call it, two years ago, they came out with a stat. And the stat said that it's like 83%, and you know, I'm not gonna source this because I don't know if it's exactly right, but an overwhelming majority of real estate agents close on less than two transactions per year. They make less than two commission checks per year. 80% of licensed real estate agents. Now this graph or table or whatever you wanna call it, it shows what somebody's cash flow looks like over the course of a year if they closed on four commission checks. They get a check in January, February and March, there's nothing coming in, and then April it spikes up, right? It's volatile, like the checks come and go every once in a while, and they're reliant on someone like me. They're reliant on somebody else in order for them to get paid, right? Rather than being reliant on themselves. Now, before we get in a little bit deeper about you know what this looks like and how to fix it and how to prevent this, um, let's get some quotes. First one's from Uncle Warren, Mr. Warren Buffett, arguably the greatest investor of all time. He says, never depend on a single income. Make an investment to create a second source. Mr. Warren Buffett. Let's talk about somebody that's a little bit more modern in pop culture, a little bit more recognizable. Mr. Grant Cardone. He says, one of the biggest financial mistakes is to solely rely on the stream or on one stream of income. I'm going to say that again because I messed it up. One of the biggest financial mistakes is to solely rely on one stream of income. Now, Grant Cardone, he's a little bit polarizing. Some people like him, sometimes they don't. So let's get someone that's on the opposite end of the spectrum. Like, if you don't like Grant Cardone, I'm sure you probably do like Oprah. I'm not an Oprah fan. I'm more of a Grant Cardone fan. But even Oprah, when somebody asks for her financial advice, like a very key fundamental piece of financial advice, she said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's Oprah. So you got Grant Cardone, Warren Buffett, and Oprah Winfrey. And if you did a, a search or a chat GPT search or you know one of those websites that gives you quotes, you find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of quotes from financial and economic needle movers that all talk about having multiple streams of income. Even Dave Ramsey, who is a real estate investor's nemesis, he talks about having multiple streams of income. So by becoming a realtor investor hybrid, which we're gonna to refer to as hybrids, just the one word hybrids from this point moving forward, you can unlock multiple income streams without reinventing the wheel. When I say without reinventing the wheel, and this is what you probably look like if you're a hybrid, right? You got that smile on your face, you got cash, you got for rent, you got sold, right? Because you're already putting in this work and you have the resources that your real estate investor clients need, such as deal flow. You're probably dealing with the contractor. You're probably dealing with the title company. You're probably, in some respects, dealing with the lender. You're coordinating that transaction and you're helping your investors grow their nest egg, right? You have, you're, you're, you're within reach of all the resources that the investor uses for their business. Matter of fact, the investor is one layer away from it when you're directly to it, especially when it comes to the deal flow, okay? A lot of times when people say start multiple businesses, they say don't, don't deviate too much from your primary business. For example, somebody that has, you know, uh, they sell chocolates, they probably aren't gonna wanna go build a windmill business. If you have a chocolate business, you may wanna start a milkshake business, you know what I mean? And so when it comes to, when it comes to having multiple streams of income as a real estate agent, you already have all the pieces that the real estate investor needs. Your client is showing you how the game works. And so if you can implement using other people's money to buy and sell those properties yourself, to become a landlord yourself, I mean, the deal flow is already there. It's a missed opportunity if you don't, okay? So if you learn house flipping like a top 1% investor, you can either buy or represent investors on the properties that come across your desk, okay? Multiple exit strategies equate to accelerated wealth generation. I'm gonna say it again. Multiple exit strategies equate to accelerated wealth generation and create multiple streams of income for you, your family, and the people that care about you, okay? This is that same graph when you bring in house flipping, when you bring in wholesaling, when you bring in BRRR, all of a sudden those spikes get a little bit higher and they become more frequent. 
multiple streams of income makes it so you don't have to rely on how your client is feeling on a particular day and just hoping that they close on the deal. Now this is, again, we'll call her, uh, what are we calling her? We're calling her Tammy, okay? Tammy is an actual agent that I work with. This is a property that she sold for me probably eight or nine months ago. I remember it was on Monterey Street, Mendocino Street, Monterey, one of them that starts with an M. She sold probably 50 or 60 properties for me over the last three and a half years, okay? She's a multi-million dollar investor. She flips houses herself in her local market. She renovates houses and converts them into, uh, into rentals clear across the country. She's in California. She's got an extensive real estate portfolio in Ohio, and she never visits the place. She visits Mexico, but probably not Ohio, right? She goes on vacations with her daughter. Uh, she is a single mother, and she is a multimillionaire because she is a hybrid. Be like Tammy. Don't be like Timmy, all right? Now, shocking fact number two, you're probably leaving a lot of money on the table. Now, here is Timmy again, um, and you know we'll read this right here. Desperate agents don't understand the game. And you know we alluded to that deal flow, right? The gold mines that are sitting right there in front of us. Now, a desperate agent, if they see a deal come in and they send it to someone like me, the real estate investor client, and I pass on the deal, or I put it under contract and something comes up in my inspection period and I back out, this agent gets pissed. This agent is desperate. This agent is tough to deal with, and it's very, very annoying. Um, matter of fact, because I'm a top 1% real estate investor, matter of fact, I'm probably a top 0.1% real estate investor. I've been doing this for a while, working very smart and very hard, and I've made a lot of money in this game. But when you network like a top 1%er, you talk to other people in the markets that you're in. I'm in touch with tons of other investors in my primary markets. And if the topic of good real estate agents or bad real estate agents comes up, I've heard probably probably five or six different investors say, I won't work with that guy because anytime I'm not gonna move forward with something, he starts putting the guilt trip on me. He lays it on me. He tells me he needs this, right? He, he acts like we're working for his paycheck rather than us trying to protect ourselves. And so when word gets out like that, agents are turned off, or excuse me, investors are turned off. All right, you don't want to be like Timmy. You want to have multiple options any time a deal comes across your desk. So most agents are completely blind to the gold mines that are right in front of their faces. If the client doesn't buy, the deal is game over. Now, this is something, and I forget how the quote initially came to me, but someone said, you're not a year into your business. You're repeating the first month 12 separate times. And so that's what you see a lot of times with the folks, the agents that are relying on purely commissions, right? They get that commission, they get that check, and then they start from scratch, right? They're just repeating their first month in the business over and over and over again. They can't say that they're a year in. They can say that they're 12 separate months in. Now, I want you to, if you're listening to this and you're a real estate agent that works with investors, are you constantly chasing that next check? Do you have to reinvent the wheel every time? Do you have to do TikTok dances to try to find clients in the local market? There's a better way to do this and a more profitable way to do this, okay? Most agents aren't using their insider knowledge to its fullest potential. Yes, you have insider information. I know that the SEC says insider information is a felony if you share it. When it comes to real estate investing, if you're an investor-friendly agent, that insider knowledge that you have is worth millions and millions of dollars. And most people just aren't aware of it. And most real estate agents will be devastated to realize how much money they're truly losing by not having the right knowledge. And this, my friends, is called the ignorance tax. And we all pay it. I pay, um, you know, I'm a multimillionaire, but I'm not a billionaire. It costs me a billion dollars a year to be ignorant of how to make a billion dollars a year. Right? We know that it's possible to do it because there's multiple billionaires out there in the United States. There's multiple billionaires out there in the real estate investing space. So let's say you're trying to be a millionaire, but you're not there yet. You're making $200,000 a year. The ignorance tax that you're paying every, every year is $800,000, okay? The ignorance tax costs all of us, and most people are so scared to look at it that we're just oblivious to it. Now, this is what the agent looks like. 
that is paying a huge amount, paying a million dollars a year in their ignorance tax, right? They're blind, but there's money right in front of their desk, but they don't know how to approach a deal themselves that they're reliant and hopeful and desperate for a client to come in and save the day so they can make a little bit of the crumbs as far as the meat on the bones are concerned, okay? In reality, market insights and lead flow give you a huge advantage if you become a hybrid, okay? Hybrid advantages, and this was supposed to pop in one by one, but as you can tell, I'm a real estate investor. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a graphic designer. But a huge advantage to being a hybrid is you can have first pick on the properties that come across your desk. Now, a, an also very, very important advantage is if you're promising some real estate, real estate investor that's your client that you'll give them first pick and they back out or they don't have the capacity to do a deal, you can have second pick. Uh, I almost said her real name. Tammy, a lot of times, if I say that I'm not interested in a deal or if I don't have capacity or it's just in an area of the city or in the market that she's in, I'm just simply not interested in. A lot of times she takes it down as a second option. She has the ability to, and it's no sweat. She, you know, she's not desperate. She's not begging me to buy this house. If I say no, she just takes it herself, okay? You can also wholesale like Tammy does. You can provide OPM resources to your clientele if you're in the game. If you're in the game and you have local private lenders that fund people 100% other people's money to purchase and renovate a property, which there's hundreds of billions of dollars out there with private lenders that do this, and you have a client that's having trouble financing something, you can come in and bring the OPM resources to them because you know they're in that market because you play in that market as well. Essentially, you become the hero. And that's the hero real estate investor, right? Even has like a nice five o'clock shadow, got the Superman on his chest, right? You become the hero by understanding how the game works, by knowing how to talk to the contractors, not just in theory, but because you deal with them as well. You can treat your clients like you treat your own projects, right? You can support them. You can give them advice in the correct way, in a way that looks out for them rather than looks out for your own commission check. And here's a little secret. If you're looking out for your client's best interests, you in turn are protecting your commission check and you get repeat business from customers that feel like they're supported and cared for by you, the investor friendly real estate agent, okay? Invest your resources into learning the strategies of successful real estate investors and model them, right? Model them. Don't iterate on them. Model them. Repeat what they do and get similar results. That's the way you can throw yourself into the game. You're already in the game anyway. You got a toe dipped in because you have the lead flow, right? Because you have the local connections. Like this is a huge advantage that you can have that can make you a ton more money. Connect with private lenders who lend in your state or in your or your local market. Start making offers on some of your lead flow. That's the way to throw yourself in the game. And as you know, you can put inspection periods on your offer. Just make those offers, get a little taste of the business. And in, in a worst case scenario, you back out and you talk to some lenders and you talk to some contractors. But in the best case scenario is you're probably going to get some of those properties under contract and move forward with them which does nothing but increase your bank account. So if I read this slide, you'll be amazed by how much this will help you serve your clients while at the same time skyrocketing your bank account. All right, shocking fact number three, your knowledge gap is costing you, and it's costing you big time. I hate to be bringing this bad news, but the knowledge gap, right, that ignorance tax costs you so much money if you're an investor-friendly real estate agent. Okay, most agents in today's game are in a race to the bottom. You see this all over the place. You've got Redfin agents, you know, uh, listing properties for 1% commission, right? You've got, uh, you know, there's some agents that are willing to not take a commission or forego a commission. You have some agents that say, just pay me 800 bucks and I'll list the house. And they're trying to get out there and get clientele by being cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Because I think in their mind, it's, you know, 800 bucks is better than 0 hundred bucks, right? Having the transaction and getting something in my experience and my, my resume is better than not getting anything at all. And so you see a lot of these agents that are dependent on price point rather than value, see a lot of them just running to the bottom, right? Competing on who can do it for cheaper. At the same time, you see luxury real estate agents absolutely crushing it, right? You ever notice in certain markets, if you drive through the nice area of town, 
the same agent is the one that's listing these beautiful million dollar houses or multi-million dollar houses. And those folks are absolutely crushing it. Now, what's the difference between the two, right? The cheapo agent that you see there on the left, they're living a cheapo lifestyle. They're trying to devalue their services by participating in the race to the bottom. While the luxury real estate agent, they do a good job because they're familiar with what their customer is facing, their clientele is facing, because they're luxury as well. So if you're a real estate agent, in order to attract other investors to you, you might as well become a real estate investor yourself. You get yourself a seat at the table with a lot of the top, you know, the other top investors in your markets. You can talk to them differently. You can network them with them differently. You're network, networking with them, not just to try to get their business as the agent that's representing, with, representing them, but in addition to that, you can network with them in a way where you're sharing resources because you guys might you know, use the same lenders. You might have the same contractors. You might need a resource on cabinets in that local market. All of a sudden, you become a peer rather than just somebody trying to hustle to get their business. Okay? So the difference is the size of their knowledge gaps. The dude on the left has a huge knowledge gap because he's only a real estate agent. He's only trying to get commission checks. He's only trying to protect commission checks where the one on the right, their knowledge gap is so much smaller because they are luxury. They live in the same neighborhoods. They go to the same country clubs, right? They, they drive the same type of car. They go to dinner in the same areas. They attract clientele because they are the clientele. Okay. So if you're an investor friendly agent, or if you're trying to become an investor friendly agent, become an investor and that will change everything for you. Okay. Standing out in a competitive market is damn tough. And without advanced knowledge or without being a peer to your client base, it'll be tough to provide them with the best advice and the best service. Okay. Branding can be challenging when everybody's trying to be a real estate agent, especially if you're in that area where everybody's just trying to discount things in order to provide value to a customer. You can provide va value by being an investor and knowing as much or more about investing than your client base. That's how you attract clientele rather than just trying to get something for the cheapest amount possible, okay? Your knowledge gap costs you credibility as well as new business, okay? And without a unique value proposition, you're gonna risk blending in on that rat race to the bottom. But by mastering the house flipping business, you'll be able to provide unparalleled value to investors who are the, the to investors who are the top one percenters. I'm not editing this out. You get me real and raw, uh, including my stutters. All right. So you'll be able to more easily connect with lenders and investors by being in the game rather than trying to coach them and be their agent from the bleachers. If you're in the game, you talk to them more intimately. You have a better understanding. And if you're in the game, you're making way more money than if you're just a real estate agent. Okay. So shocking fact number four, leverage is your most underutilized cash cow, okay? And this is an attempt at a picture as a, of a real estate agent leveraging a house with a cash cow on top of it, okay? With leverage, most agents limit, limit themselves by working alone so they can keep as much of their commission check as possible, okay? But we all have 24 hours in a day. The slow, this slows growth and limits potential if you're working alone and trying to keep everything to yourself and doing all the things and wearing all the hat, wearing all the hats. And also, most agents that don't use leverage would rather have 100% of one commission check than 85 or 80% of 10 commission checks. And a little like secret to, to leverage is the agent that has you know 10 different commission checks but they're only receiving 80% of it because they're leveraged other people's resources and so forth. They're not working as hard as the one that's trying to keep 100% of that one check. All right, as a hybrid, you force yourself to grow out of the scarcity mindset and lean into leveraging other people's resources. Okay, and other people's resources is OPM, which means other people's money. You got OPT, which is other people's time, and OPE, which is other people's expertise and experience. Now, this can be really, really challenging mentally, especially at first, but it quickly buys your time back while growing your bank account. Now, a way to start introducing leverage to your business, especially as an investor-friendly real estate agent, is make an offer a day on the stuff that comes in on your lead flow, okay? 
And then when stuff goes under contract, call five lenders and call five contractors and have both of them give you bids on the project when the offer is accepted. Okay, you'll get in the habit of using leverage and you'll likely have a profitable deal on your hands that you can move forward with. Those are both huge benefits to doing this. Okay. Actually, before we get into it, I want to talk about Tammy again. Tammy, I told you she's on the beach and I'm doing a good job of not saying her real name. But Tammy's on the beach. She's texting me on the beach. She's with her boyfriend there. They're having a good time. I think she's having margaritas already. I'm not sure what time it is in the day over there. But my deals, the projects that I have going on, she's about 2,000 miles away from me, but the projects that I have going on in the market that she represents me on, she's got people going to the properties. Okay, She's got people um, that are taking pictures for me. She's making sure everything's on point. She's got people looking at the budgets. If there's anything I need to sign, like I'm still making offers even though she's in Mexico and I'm clear across the country. She's got virtual assistants. She's got in-person assistants that are doing a lot of the busy work, which gives her time to network more, to find more deals for me, that her team in turn goes out and has me sign and you know put together a lot of the busy work. Now, once she started doing that as a real estate agent, she started using that same strategy, those same tactics as a real estate investor. She was comfortable with um, you know, contacting real estate agents clear across the country in Ohio, uh, making offers on properties in Ohio, finding private lenders to fund those deals, using a property management service, um, you know, go and source tenants to renovate those homes. She's using contractors out there, right? The game of leverage most people are scared of, especially real estate agents, because they want to protect as much as possible of that paycheck. Um, they're scared of it, and it in turn makes them work harder for a lower amount of money. Okay. So shocking fact number five, your isolation will kill your business. And I hate using the word kill. It's a violent word. But your isolation as an investor-friendly real estate investor, excuse me, as an investor-friendly real estate agent will kill your business. Okay. With real estate agents that work with investors, you're built a little bit different. You can make a lot more money for sure. Um, but most real estate agents are out there in the local community trying to find people that want to move out of their homes, sell their houses with them, or people that are moving into the area and they want to represent them as the buyer's agent. Okay, With investor-friendly agents, you know, you do things a little bit differently. You might have someone clear across the country, you're writing cash offers, but then they're bringing in hard money loans and private money and it scares the seller. Uh, you know, other agents sometimes have a limited amount of patience with investor friendly agents. And then also if you're networking, most of the time, if you're trying to network with the other investor friendly agents in the area, they're secretive, right? They, they have their cards up like close to the chest. They try to protect themselves in the strategies that they're using. So it's very, very difficult and somewhat lonely when it comes to being an investor-friendly real estate agent. Most investor-focused agents navigate the real estate world solo, which obviously limits growth. Now, if you're not staying motivated, keeping up to speed with what's working, it's very hard to go at it alone, right? Investor-focused agents often compete with each other and hold back their secret sauce. That's what we were talking about earlier with the cards close to the chest. Now, the best way to avoid this is by joining investor-related communities and online groups and joining them as a hybrid. So you can go in and network with people that are, that are actually the principals in these transactions, right? Other flippers, other wholesalers, other folks that are in the game. Now, the best types of communities are like many economies. The Flip Secrets community, very proud of it. It's the best one in the business where people are uh, funding each other's deals, wholesaling deals to each other, buying each other's wholesaling deals. They're sharing resources and they're celebrating wins in groups like this, group like the Flip Family, which is a fit, the Flip Secrets private client group. Okay, The best course of action is to pursue these groups that collaborate, that celebrate, and that grow together to elevate everybody's success. If you can do that, you may not have people in your local group that are battling against each other. You may not be able to convince them to network with you, to have the different new, new cutting edge strategies and the things that are working, but you'll have people all over the country. That's the beauty that uh, social media and that like online groups that technology provide us. We're leveraging technology to reach people all over the country and people that are doing the same thing that you're trying to do in your market. 
Now, those are the five shocking facts that you must know if you're a real estate agent that's working with investors. And if you're ready to transform your real estate career and achieve financial freedom, click the link below, book a call with one of our team members, discover how the Flip Secrets and the Flip family can help you transform into a successful hybrid real estate investor, real estate agent. You guys, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully you implement some of this stuff into your business. It can change the trajectory of your real estate career, both as an agent and as an investor, and ideally buy you financial freedom and a lifestyle by design. Again, it's your boy Jake signing out. Happy investing.